Hey guys, welcome back to CakeTube. My name is Jen, and today I'm going to show you how to make this incredibly easy brush stroke flamingo cake. I got the inspiration for this cake from Pinko Bunny. I will link her post below. Now let's get started. The first few steps of this cake are all about making the chocolate pieces. I chose to do ombre feathers for my flamingo, so I first started with melting and coloring my chocolate. The lightest shade is three parts Wilton bright white candy melts to one part pink. The mid-tone shade is all pink, and the darkest shade is three parts pink to one part bright white, and then I added some cake craft gel in the color Funky Fuchsia to achieve my desired shade. To learn more about coloring chocolate, check out my previous brush stroke cake where I go more into detail. I will link that video below. To create the brush strokes, lay down some parchment paper and scoop a good amount of chocolate onto it. Then, take a spatula or spoon and begin dragging the chocolate outwards to create your feather shape. Be careful not to make the ends of the chocolate too thin or they will break when you try to handle the pieces. Repeat this step for all colors. Once your large feathers are complete, make some smaller ones for the tail by using the same techniques. I wanted to flare the feathers outward for the tail, so before the chocolate had set, I picked up my parchment paper and laid it over a curved cup. I then transferred all of my chocolate pieces to the fridge or freezer to set up completely. I chose to use Wilton candy melts for this cake because they are cheap, come in a wide variety of colors, and they are overall just easier to work with because you don't have to temper the chocolate. You can of course use any type of chocolate you would like. Once your chocolate pieces have set, transfer them to a container to keep them in the freezer until you are ready to use them. Next we are going to create the head. I started out by freehanding a flamingo head onto a piece of parchment paper. Make sure you draw your shape backwards so we can flip it over before when we pour our chocolate. We definitely don't want to be pouring chocolate onto Sharpie because it's not food safe. After you are happy with your drawing, transfer it to a surface that you can pick up and place in your freezer. Secure it to your surface with some tape and begin pouring your chocolate. I didn't really have a plan in place when I started making this head, so I just kind of made it up as I went along. I poured the chocolate in the general shape of the drawing and made sure I leveled it out completely. Because this is a piece that would be basically standing on its own, you want to make sure you pour the chocolate pretty thick. Once it's leveled, transfer your piece to the freezer until it is just barely set but not rock hard. Then cut your flamingo head out of the parchment paper for our next step. Cut around the shape of the head with a sharp knife. I warmed my knife up over the stove before cutting so it would go through the chocolate easier. This is why it's important that your chocolate is not all the way set. If it's too hard, it will just crack when you try to cut it. After your shape is cut out, repeat all these steps for your other two chocolate colors.
After your head is completely cut out, you can use your sharp knife to clean up all the edges and make it look neat. This process took quite a long time, but it was oddly satisfying to see the finished piece emerge. You obviously don't have to spend as much time on this part as I did, but just make sure you take your time so you don't accidentally break your piece. The final step I took to clean up the head was to rub a dry paper towel over the whole surface to give it one final smoothing out. I chose to do just one side of this head for the sake of the video, but if you want your cake to be pretty from all angles, just repeat these steps on the other side of the head. Once you are satisfied with the smoothness of your piece, use a toothpick or sharp skewer to trace the eye shape onto the chocolate. Then, use some black chocolate to either pipe on the eye or draw it onto the head with a toothpick or sharp skewer. Then, set the piece aside while we move on to our next step. Our next step is to ice our cake. I'm using my favorite American buttercream recipe to ice this cake, which I have tinted using the same funky fuchsia color I used for the chocolate. I will link the recipe video for my American buttercream below. I'm also working with a cake dummy today, but this can easily be done with a stacked cake. I knew I wanted to texture this icing, so I wasn't concerned with getting it extremely smooth. To texture the icing, you can use a spoon or small spatula. Here I'm using a spatula. Place your spatula at the back of your cake and drag it around the entire cake in a spiral from bottom to top using light pressure. It is easiest to do this type of texturing with the turntable so you can do it all in one fluid motion. Because I'm working with a cake dummy, I had to cut out an actual slot for my flamingo head to fit into. If I was doing this on a real cake, I would recommend still cutting a slit in the cake so you know exactly where to place the head. To place the head, first dip it in some melted chocolate and then place it in its designated area on the cake making sure to position it before the chocolate sets. Once the head is placed, use more melted chocolate to fill in the gaps around the base of the flamingo head and allow that to set up. Once that chocolate is set, ice the top of the cake the same way you did the sides. And lastly, place on your chocolate feathers. I place mine more towards the back of the cake with the lightest color in the back. Your icing should still be soft at this point, so you can adjust the feathers as needed. 
This is a perfect example of why I used candy melts for this. I handled these pieces a lot, adjusting them forward or backward, and I didn't have any issues with melting at all. And that's it. I know I save this for a lot of my cakes, but this cake is so easy to complete and does not take too much time at all. It would be a really great cake for a beginner to try. If you recreate my version of this cake, I'd love to see it. Share your photos with me on Instagram using the hashtag CakeTubeJB. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please be sure to follow me and subscribe for more cake tutorials. Have a great day.